And we are back with the fourth segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this fourth segment, we are going to talk about Kevin Durant being top eight in scoring. And I'm going to talk again about Paul Pierce's comments about um, Kevin Durant and his scoring prowess, as well <clears throat> as continue to bring up the rest of this Michigan State and Mississippi game, because... It is. It does look like it's a very competitive game going on right now. Ooh, and one of the Mississippi players just got hit in the head. Oh, ooh, that was a really tough hit. So we'll see like what the call is, whether it's going to be a technical, whether he has a concussion, if he's good. Right now he's sitting on the bench. So, but let's go ahead and talk about Kevin Durant being top eight in scoring. Obviously, when you think of KD you think of him being one of the best scorers of all time simply because like he is a very very rare breed of basketball players where he is super tall mm, turnover by mississippi state let's go so he's super tall and but he was sort of like the start i don't want to say he was the start of like um allowing other positions to like handle like him but he definitely did play a part because Going into the NBA, he was six foot nine, right? But as he, but since he was relatively young going into the league, he ended up getting a growth spurt. Ooh, offensive rebound by Michigan State, and one nice basket, thirty-seven to twenty-nine, Michigan State right now. But regardless, Kevin Durant, he was a very, he was six foot nine as a as a teenager. Makes sense, right? Because, you know, he's a basketball player, super tall. However, going into the NBA, his height, he had, he had, he grew since like his rookie year up until now. Like before he was listed as six foot nine, but when you compared him to the height of Boogie, of um, DeMarcus Cousins, I almost called him Boogie Cousins, but when you compared him to DeMarcus Cousins, his height, he was right here. And DeMarcus Cousins was like right here. And everyone's like, okay, he's clearly not six foot nine, because if he was six foot nine, then it would be like this. So then it was later updated a few a few years with when he had shoes on. Like it was actually updated quite recently, where like they go every single year with the NBA turnover. Oh my goodness. Every single year in the NBA, they now like give a fully updated like height cap with like player with shoes on. Nice shot, Michigan State up by 10. And they also give an update on, like, um, just the player's wingspan, all of that in general. So they did that with KD, and they figured out that he was actually 6'10", 6'11", with his shoes on. So obviously, like, he's really, really tall. And it was sort of the... No one has ever really seen a 7-footer do the type of things that he did. Like... The type of ball handling that he displayed and the type of shot selection that he displayed, nobody has seen that before. It's like he could handle the ball like a guard, create any type of separation that he wants, and there's nothing that the defense can really do because nine times out of ten, perimeter defenders can't contest him because he is so much taller. So every single shot to him is like an open shot unless... Now, in this league, we have players like Giannis Antetokounmpo who are long, lanky enough and are tall enough to be able to defend him and defend him relatively well. And LeBron James, obviously another good defender that's able to defend him pretty well. Ben Simmons, I mean, I didn't want to mention him, but if Ben Simmons is the type of player whose frame and weight is good enough to defend Kevin Durant... Is he going to defend Kevin Durant? No. He'll never do that. He'll never try to play defense on Kevin Durant. I doubt he's even going to try to play a game against Kevin Durant. I'm sure he's going to try to sit down, watch it from the sidelines, you know, like a nice bench player that he is. But I digress. So, ooh. Okay, that was a tough shot by Michigan State. I don't know if that was a foul or if that was if that was intended. But now Michigan State is up 41-29. Way to make a statement going into this going into this next half. But again, like he's just a different breed of players that we've just never seen before. And this type of this has sort of like evolved the game in a sense because now people are realizing, "Oh, 
these small forwards and these power forwards, they can handle the ball too. Maybe we should give them the ball a little bit more. And now we have a player like Victor Wembenyama, seven foot four and can handle the ball like a guard. And everything that I said about Kevin Durant applies with him, except it's like it's on steroids because now he's seven foot four and nobody can contest him. Literally not even Kevin Durant can contest him. He is that tall. And it's it's honestly like it is it's a cheat code. There's really nothing no no other way to put it other than it being a cheat code. We've never seen anyone so naturally gifted in height and gifted in like actual like skill on the basketball court. Now when I mean by skill, I mean by obviously if you have to be very skilled to be in the NBA. But I mean like ball handling skill because usually when you're a big man it's very you're you're very slow on your feet and you're very slow handling the ball and you're also not that good at shooting the ball most of the time now it's a little different with how the game's been evolving but most of the time that's the stereotype and that's how it's been but as the league has sort of progressed and as KD started to get better and better a lot more forwards have been able to handle the ball more because a lot more teams have realized okay like we can let these guys handle the ball like we don't have to just make the guard bring the ball up every single time. And obviously Kevin Durant, he doesn't bring the ball up every single time because like they actually can run plays for him where he just goes off of a screen and takes a really nice mid-range. And Victor Wembanyama, he doesn't have to bring the ball up every single time, but sometimes he does. And it's like we've never really seen this type of ball before. I also mentioned that I wanted to bring up Paul Pierce in his comments saying that he would be he would reach 40,000 points if he didn't get injured. I did say, I touched on it and saying that like it was only because LeBron has 40,000 points, but in reality, the math isn't mathing. Like I'll just pull up exactly how many points Kevin Durant has in his entire career right now. Just give me one second. Kevin Durant total points. So well, well, my bad. I have to put total points in his career. There we go. T so he has 28,610 points. So you're telling me in one year he is going to end up getting 12,000 points? You're telling me in one year he's going to get 12,000 points? The math isn't mathing it's simply not mathing paul pierce is salty the fact that like he even said this statement is like are you serious like that does not that it's so counterintuitive it's like he cannot choose whether to be speak the truth or speak just complete fallacies because this is the same guy who said that kevin durant should not be in goat conversations like, that was, the, I'd, I'd mentioned it before on a podcast, like, that was the one time where he spoke the truth, and that was very, very true. Kevin Durant should not be in any GOAT conversation whatsoever, simply because of that weak move to Golden State. Those rings that he has are the easiest rings ever won by any athlete in any sport. They are the easiest championships that any athlete could have ever asked for. I am sorry to say that is just how it works, because... He joined a 73-win team. I don't think there is any player in the history of any sport that has ever joined a team that has won that much and was still and was a good player. I don't think that's ever happened. They join a team that's good enough to try and beat that team, like <clears throat> LeBron. So at the half, Duquincy seems to be up 38-30 to against BYU. Oh, no, my bracket's not looking good now. No, 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 no. We cannot let this happen. No, please. Literally, the first upset would be... Oh, my gosh. I'm... This isn't good. This is not looking good for me right now. Now, let me just go ahead and see some of the... I'll just go ahead and give a quick update on some of the other games that are going on right now. So, other than that game, Akron is going up against Creighton. So, they that game finally started. Creighton is up 8-6 to six right now. So, ooh. What a putback by Mississippi. And, again, I might as well go ahead and update on this game. Uh, Michigan State is going up against Mississippi. Oh, no. Oh, no. Michigan State is throwing turnovers. 
and Mississippi's going on a run. Call a timeout. They're not going to call a timeout? What? Excuse me? Okay, Mississippi's hitting them with a full court press now, and it's really messing with them. Okay. All right. Now they just have to compose themselves. That, that, that really frightened me for a minute. And, oh, Kiro, Kirito MVP, what's up? I saw a rare thing in NBA 2K24. I haven't been touching, I haven't been on 2K in a while, so I can't really tell you exactly what, I mean, what were you referring to? Before I go ahead and end off the stream, tell me exactly like what you were referring to. Now, let me see, oh good lord. Oh no, oh, and one by Mississippi State, oh no. Oh, it was on the floor, okay. So right now the score is 43-34 uh, right now. Michigan State is like, ugh. Michigan State is like, they're looking pretty confident, but so far it's like, it's like they're letting it, they could let it slip away. They really could let it slip away. But again, more so on like, more talking about like the KD situation and like, he's not going to get that many, I mean, maybe towards the end of the career he would, but regardless like towards the end of his career he might get i could see him top five towards the end but i don't see him getting forty thousand points now curdo mvp in the chat he said someone had uh dale arnhart's signature on their court i was like is that i was like is that i hope he don't get sued oh um I mean, well, that's, that's the thing. You can put so many images, like so many copyright images on that game that it's like, that don't really get flagged or don't really get sued because no one really like looks at that as much. I, I've seen like a lot of Xbox profiles have a bunch of copyright images. And I mean, if it's a, if it's a signature, I really don't think you can get copyrighted with a signature. That's just me, however. But with that, I mean, I really want to continue watching this college game right now and this seems to be, yeah, this looks like it's going to be the end of the show. I'm running out of time. So tune into this game, everyone. Tune into March Madness. Be sure to watch the Peacocks as they go as they play in 9-10. Thank you so much for tuning into the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show and leave a positive review. It really does make a difference. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates. Before I end it off, one more, one more comment coming in from Carito MVP. Dale Arnhart's third wife will sue anyone using the Arnhart name. She sued Dale Sr.'s own ch children for their names. I mean, I mean, let's be real. Do you really think that she knows like that specific player and is using that specific signature in 2K? Like, do we, do we really know that? I'm not entirely sure. Maybe, maybe, maybe that is crazy. Like, maybe she's crazy enough to, like, um, to actually do that and actually see that. But if it's just a random, ooh, okay. If it's just a random that's doing that, I think it's, like, really tough to sort of, um, wow, okay, good dunk by Mississippi. It's a, re it's really tough for them to sue. But that's just me. Again, I have no idea, like, how she's going to handle that if that's even like a big deal but i digress so again that's going to be the end of this stream right now be sure to tune in tomorrow where we might have a special guest going in on the show and tune into the rest of these march madness games that are going on because they are very very fun right now byu is at the half 30 to 38 dukensi's up 38 excuse me so Again, tune into all these games. These games are fantastic. And remember to tip and to donate to get your comments recognized. Be sure to use the link that's in the description and the link displayed below the ticker. That is gsmcpodcast.net. Really helps the show, makes the show much more interactive between myself and you guys. And that is the end of the show. And I am your host, Nelson. And as always, take care. Yeah. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. I don't wanna go.